Yes, we are. Uh, so thanks for the introduction, Sam. Pleasure to be here. Um, so I'm Matt Wenham from Asaltex. Uh, I've got my American. I can't get my words out. I've got my American buddy with me, Carter. Carter, say hey. Hey, your Texas buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today we'll be talking about antenna configurations. Uh, why using the correct type of antenna uh, will be crucial in specific environments. We'll be running through the different types of antennas, how to read antenna patterns, uh, antenna attenuations. Uh, we'll be running through a bunch of use cases as well. Uh, but first, we've got a little giveaway. So we've got here an Aceltex battery pack, the V2. So what we'll be doing is giving away one of these battery packs at the end of the session today. And all you need to do to get involved is go on Twitter, um, if you use the hashtag WFDD underscore Asseltex and also Wi-Fi Design Day. And what we'll do is pick one winner at random at the end of the session. And on that note, I'll hand over to the cast to get things started. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Uh, looks like my slides are a tad bit delayed. <laughs> so I, I had the uh, accelerator didn't way up, but it, uh, it just came up right now. Hey, so thanks a lot. Uh, Sam, and thanks, Matt, for the introduction. But first of all, thanks uh, to Open Reality for having us on the 2020 Wi-Fi Design Field Day. Looking forward to hopefully next year we'll be face-to-face. -face. Uh, Matt and I are both bummed about not being able to do WLPC this year, a lot of cool events, but we will next year. But th thank you so much for having us. Uh, as Matt said, we're going to kind of focus a little bit today on talk a little bit about antennas and kind of do a review on antenna theory. A lot of the people in the audience I know is a this is a good audience, a knowledgeable audience. I don't want to bore you too much, but I do want to go over some of the use cases that we've been doing a lot of business in and will continue to do and kind of maybe give you some food for thought, uh, some challenges we've seen and, and some things we've done to get around the challenges around you know what we call some bigger bigger verticals for us right now, uh, even though, as we all know, Wi-Fi, just because of the nature is, uh, is um, always uh, in almost every vertical but uh i i can't believe sam put me before the beer so i hope you liked our intro keith usually does that to me at wlbc for some reason i'm before the beer and i don't know why but i guess maybe that's okay so um a little bit about excel Tech, so you guys may know us on the phone obviously we sell a lot of ancillary products that work with all the radio manufacturers which is great uh we uh biggest line by far is antennas uh sam had talked briefly we got acquired by hubble which is gonna be a great partnership. Uh, they bring a lot of uh, size and horsepower to us uh, and uh, a lot of experience uh, in electrical side, but a really big focus now on networking. So it's, it's been, uh, been kind of cool, but I don't wanna focus on, on, on who we are right now. I'm gonna focus on the product. So um, I don't know, Sam, if you were gonna throw up a polling question. I know you talked about that. So I, I'd had a note here that there might be one right now. But anyway, so the first poll is um, when you're designing a Wi-Fi network um, and you're going to be using an external antenna, what are you most focused on? Is it the beam width, the gain or the aesthetics? Um, just a quick straw poll here to see what the audience feel um, is most important. Just kind of curious to see. Yeah, yeah just give people um, a little bit of time to get their answers in. The old answer, it depends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's always difficult when you're forced to choose an option. Um, oh, yeah. Think... Because, you know, and I'll talk a little bit while we're talking. We'll see if the poll comes up. But, you know, it, it, you know we talked about it before. And, you know, you'll see. Uh, i got to uh, flip this thing back over. Oh, never mind. Um, obviously, there's two different types of ways we have access points. One, integrated antennas, external antennas. About 75% of the time, you're going to see integrated antennas, which is which is great. But when you do have uh, external antennas, people always ask, you know, why why do you want to use an external antenna? You know, this access point where you have external connectors. A lot of it has to do with just, you know, you're trying to achieve reach hard to achieve areas or high ceilings, or you're trying to focus the coverage. You know, Wi-Fi because it's becoming so prevalent, and you, because it's a you know unlicensed technology, we've got to make sure we're being a friendly neighbor and staying, you know. 
try to minimize the interference. And we do that a lot of different ways, but one of the ways is focusing the coverage. Aesthetics, huge. Uh, I'll show you an antenna here. This is one we did for uh, a theme park. They wanted to put the antenna inside the shrubbery <laughs> so that they didn't have to see it. So uh, that became a big one. You know, it's funny, you guys say 7% is for aesthetics. That would be, and it depends on the, on, the, on the industry. You know, if you're in an industry that doesn't care, of course, I, I don't, I, I'm going to always go for being with. Uh, gain is just a product of, of kind of the beam. So I agree 100% with what that's, that was my answer too when I answered the question, but aesthetics can be important. When you're deploying outdoors, uh, you can put an uh, access point with a integrated antennas in an enclosure, put it outdoors. We do it in stadiums and stuff. But usually when you're outdoors, you're going to try to use an external, you know, antenna with external connectors and, you know, connect up some kind of antenna that allows you to do, you know, put the uh, signal outdoors. I love it when you can have the access point inside the building and have the antenna maybe outside where the access points, you know, obviously protected. You can put them in environmental enclosures and that's okay, but if you can keep them inside, the better. A lot of it's maximizing the AP the capabilities or maximizing the coverage. Uh, minimizing the, the number of APs is another way to say it, which to the radio guys don't want me to say, but, but it, it always tees with them. If I do a good job with my antennas, we're going to be more efficient, maybe use less, less uh, uh, access points. So, a little bit of a delay here. Oh, no. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's, it's moving. I don't know what the delay was. Uh, so two different types of antennas. Again, we've gone over this before. I don't want to spend a lot of time. Basically, have directional and omnidirectional. Depends on what kind of coverage you're trying to do. If you're trying to cover an open area where, you know, maybe you just need more of a, I, I say, a balloon-type pattern or open pattern, omnidirectional antennas are awesome. Your integrated antennas, when you have them integrated in the access points, that's going to be an omnidirectional antenna. Usually, uh, just as soon as I say that, somebody's going to put a directional antenna in one of these, but it's usually omnidirectional. And what that's designed is to cover an area that's maybe like an open area or, you know, like a class, or maybe like a, you know, an open a school area, an office building, but really designed to cover that open area that you're going to be uh, uh, like an office area or something. The way the gain works, uh, you guys talked about the number one thing you cared about was beam width, not gain, although it gain affects beam width. So as the gain goes up, think about your balloon of an omni antenna. As your gain goes up, gain, gain goes up, you're actually crushing the balloon down and shooting your, your vertical plane out. So a higher gain antenna is going to have a very flat pattern, but a very broad vertical plane. Could be great if you're trying to do that application. If you're trying to cover very, very high ceiling and you're standing under the antenna, it could be terrible. So depending on what you're trying to do, the gain you know, has a lot to do with that. So just know the higher the gain, think about it, eventually it will look like a pancake if you squash it down enough and the gain will go out. Because you're dealing with you know, a finite amount of power coming out of the access points. The only way to send the signals in different direction is to manipulate the gain, which in turn manipulates your horizontal and vertical patterns. The directional antenna, different deal. Um, I wouldn't say I, more applications are probably used with directional antennas when I'm using external, but not necessarily the number of quantity of antennas, but a lot of our vertical, excuse me, a lot of our um, external antenna applications are using some kind of directional antenna because normally you're trying to cover a certain area, maybe, you know, beam down a hallway or focus in an area and, and always think about, you know, uh, external uh, 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 directional antennas like a mag light where, you know, the mag light like police officers carry where you can dial it down, same concept. The higher the gain, the more you dial it down. So a lower gain uh, directional antenna is going to have uh, a very broad signal. So think about that flashlight where it's at the broadest setting. You can see, like, say you're in a big room. You can see the whole room. If you dial it down, now you can see in the corner, but maybe you can't see that much to the left or the right of you. So the higher the gain, further the coverage, the more focused the coverage, but then you lose left to right. But it depends on what the application is. If that's what you're trying to cover, then that makes sense. You do that. So that's just a quick kind of review on the antennas. Another thing that we always like to talk talk about is uh, is the attenuation things. And I'm, this is kind of a lead into some of the verticals we're going to talk about. Because anytime we're going into any vertical, whether it's a 
distribution center, an office building, a hospital school, we always have to think, you know, what things are going to attenuate the signal, the Wi-Fi, just by the sheer nature of what it is, whether it's concrete, plaster, which may have, you know, like a, a metal sheathing material under it, glass, whether the glass has any kind of uh, reflective material. Another thing we always think about when we're when we're when we're talking about is, is most of our product, really all of our products, dual band. It's two, four, five gig. And heck, we're about to start getting into tri-band, which everybody knows with Wi-Fi 6E and stuff. So how do I make this signal kind of the same pattern, the two, four, and the five gig? And how does this attenuation material affect the different frequencies? Two, four tends to penetrate, uh, you know, certain materials better than five gigs. So you got to just think about that when you're going in these areas or, or you know, if it's, you know, a two, four, five gig coverage together, which we don't see as much anymore. A lot of people are that we just want five gig or maybe want five gig and two fours for IoT. But we try to keep the pattern similar and have to think about, you know, what's the material of construction going to do to the RF when you get there. Obviously, we're big believers in using tools, you know, like an Eka housing example for predictive as well as doing the site survey uh, just to make sure what you're doing uh, works the way it's supposed to. Did you have another polling question? I had a note here. Uh, we do, Carter. Yeah. So, just Perfect. curious to know how often um, people actually use an external antenna um, when designing Wi Fi. Is it something that you rarely use, or is it something that you use in almost every deployment? Anyway, while we're getting that poll, that'll be just curious. Uh, just to find out, um, I got to answer the poll question too because I'm I'm a presenter and I'm also watching. <laughs> so, so let's talk about you know, use case one. And, and this this was a use case. We're still doing quite a bit of large public venues. It's kind of slowed down a little bit with COVID, but now it's kind of picking back up. And I don't know if it's because everybody's feeling like maybe we're kind of getting towards the end of it. I don't know, but we're starting to get more people calling us now. Going, okay, we really want to start. You know looking at this either refresh or changing out or fixing this large public venue. The large public venues are, they're challenging in themselves because one, you know they're going to be high density, but when I say a large public venue, normally what I'm meaning in this example is like a stadium, like a soccer stadium, American football, hockey, basketball, some kind of arena type setting. You're going to have high density or you're going to have no density. I mean, it's either empty or it's going to be full of a ton of people. So really making sure you have good focus coverage is important i'm telling you aesthetics is critical uh i'll show you I mean, this is an antenna we did for a stadium that wanted to not see the antenna it was going up against a black ceiling so antennas up there it's kind of nice but it you know great coverage but we actually built the uh antenna with, with the black color in the resin so that it would look nice for almost forever so aesthetics always very important uh, many different applications you know when you look at a stadium and this is where it's always challenging and somebody says hey you know how you know how many antennas for a stadium or what do we need we're like well it depends you got the stadium part i guess the, the where the fans sit or the bowl area Let, let's say it's a basketball arena because that's kind of the use case i'm talking about you got this whole basketball arena where fans are everywhere so that's one coverage area then you may have uh, the perimeter of the stadium may have food courts where people can go up and get beers and then they may have bars and a lot of them and I, i'm sure they have them in europe as well they have a lot of suites these high dollar suites for the executive people to spend a lot of money to maybe watch the sport and just kind of hang out all of these care about you know great coverage they don't want to see it hide in plain sight all that so it's very very hard to do when you're looking at it so you got to just think in your mind when you go into that to be open-minded to maybe enclosures that cover the antennas maybe skinning maybe you know different ways you mount i mean it, it's just a crazy way to think about it and then it also has all the different construction materials these stadiums so one of the ones uh you know and, and when you start thinking about it some of the antennas that are really good to start with one is some of our we actually have dual and, and this could be anybody i'm not trying to make this an excel text field but uh dual polarized antennas where you have both vertical and horizontal beam uh horizontal elements so that you can try to get around some of that co-channel interference in this high gain area. And these are designed normally to put, you know, high in the ceiling, beaming down. Uh, another good thought is there's handrail antennas out there, and I'll show you a picture in a second uh, of a handrail antenna. And that's really cool. And there's actually one behind me here. I kind of see it right here. Um, this is a handrail antenna. What's designed is to beam the signal out of both sides. 
Because when you're in the stadium, one of the things you have to take to account is the people, you want to use their bodies as part of, of the design. They help you. I mean, you're going to have a stadium that may have, let's say it's a basketball arena, then we have 22,000 people in this small arena. We'll use those bodies as part of your attenuation to help help with the network. So you got to think of what are these going to do when you start getting all these people in there and all of them spilling beer and drinking beer. Under seat mounting is also a great way. A lot of times that can be done with your integrated antenna uh, access points. And I'm showing, I, I'm a big believer in showing stuff. So here's an under seat enclosure. You can see that the shell just comes off of it. Access point goes inside. You know, you want to make sure you have some kind of, you know, heat sink type deal so the access point doesn't overheat. But it allows you a cool way to, you know, get really good coverage with an access point kind of under the seat where people don't really notice it. They just think it's kind of a footrest and they can spill their drinks on it and do all that kind of stuff. So our best use case, well, we have a bunch of them, but, but is the Milwaukee Bucks Arena. I don't know. Uh, I know NBA is somewhat getting more popular in uh, Europe, but this was a cool one because they basically said, guys, you know, we're spending a billion dollars on this stadium. We look, you know, we want wireless everywhere. We're all excited. We just want to see it. We're like, okay, great. So we did some handrails. We used some directional antennas. We did a bunch of, you know, skinny to hide the antennas and maybe some little uh, thermal enclosures, but really did some cool stuff that allowed us to uh, really do some neat stuff with the Milwaukee Bucks uh, arena. You know, again, we also used, you know, again, some of that mounting from the top, beaming down type configuration with that one antenna I just showed you a minute ago to try to get that, you know, we call it like the bowl or the, or the, the area where the fans are at. Uh, and then we, uh, you know, really just thinking about different ways to mount, you know, a lot of, you know, sometimes you may have to use some crazy mount like this that mounts, you know, to, to a, a pole or, or, or maybe the iron up top so you can beam down. But really when you're doing any kind of these large public venues, you got to think of a lot of different things when you go in. The key is you have to sit down really, uh, what we've learned is not only with whoever the integrators, but a lot of times whoever's owning the facility, because they're going to give you their, they're going to lay it out that say, these are the restrictions you got to stay in for, you know, maybe to be working your own cable, where can you attach access points, antennas, or whatever. And a lot of times you say, well, what happens if I can put it there, but you don't see it? And a lot of times they're like, ah, no problem. That sounds great. So that was kind of a cool use case. And we're seeing that pick back up. I'm sure, uh, I know obviously sports uh, in Europe are huge, so I'm sure you guys are seeing a lot of this as well in these large public venues. Um, second use case I'm going to talk about that's kind of cool was uh, airports, and I say entertainment facilities more like a casinos. And they're a little bit similar in that they have you know big open areas. Uh, people are kind of moving around, uh, unlike the stadium where people kind of get fixed. I mean, and like, you know, some of our football stadiums will have 100,000 people in one area and they don't move that much. They're watching the game. You know, and uh, airports and even some of these casinos, people are moving around a lot. Uh, so you'll have a dense area that also won't be dense. So you kind of have to think through that. But aesthetics matter, not probably as much as a high-end uh, arena, but they do matter. A lot of times you have indoor-outdoor needs. Uh, a lot of you, we, we've done a, quite a bit of airports and you know, they care about obviously the, the areas inside where people are checking into to their to their gates and sitting there waiting, but they may want to have coverage also outside the airport for for the airplanes coming in for the you know the, the baggage handlers and stuff. Physical security is important. You know, normally we try to keep the antennas and product high enough where that's not an issue, but sometimes I've seen some airports that have you know weird height ceilings, making sure you have things really secure so somebody can't you know get to it. Mounting and really good. Again, the whole high density thing, having small cells of coverage is always, you know, very, very important. Some good antenna choices. Uh, this antenna, uh, one of our buddies in the U.S. called, you know, the every man's antenna, but really anybody's directional antenna is always nice uh, because it can be kind of mounted maybe up against the wall or maybe higher and beamed and directed. It's kind of unobtrusive, but gets you a nice pattern. You know, you can use the dual polarized, but use the airports. Like I said, they can be dense, but they're kind of intermittent dense where they'll have a lot of people that are not. So usually just some of our vertically polarized antennas are great. Also, you know, our kind of oil can style antenna is another one for these open areas just to get good coverage. So you're going to see a mix of something like this and maybe these directional. This is a picture from a, a big airport in the United States where they use some of the different antennas to beam off of either you know, walls or just areas. And again, they're trying to just keep them out of the way and unobtrusive uh, uh, so that they can get the proper coverage because you know, 
as you all know, when you're waiting in an airport, the last thing you want is bad Wi-Fi. And there's a casino. We've again, we've been doing some casinos. Casinos are interesting because just the whole installation part of them is interesting because of the security of it being a casino. But they care a lot about aesthetics, and they care a lot about people not seeing stuff because they don't want it to one be an eyesore, two to be a focal point. Because you know, casinos they're the masters of hiding cameras and all that kind of stuff. But good business if you can get into them. That's for sure. Kind of the last uh, vertical I want to talk about, and probably one of the most fun verticals, and the one that we have spent a lot of energy and time on. And, and, and Matt, personally, and I may have him talk a little bit about, just for a few seconds, uh, is these distribution centers. One, distribution centers is a huge market because there's distribution centers everywhere, whether that's your business, you know, like a FedEx or EPS, or uh, you're just, uh, you know, just a big retailer or a big manufacturer, you're going to have huge distribution centers. And distribution centers as a whole are very hard when it comes to wireless. And a lot of it has to do with, with a couple things. Um, just um, just yeah, a poll quickly. Optimus, sorry about that. Carter, so uh, yeah, curious to know um, if you were doing a, a, a Wi-Fi design in a warehouse, how would you mount your antennas? If you've not designed Wi-Fi for a warehouse before, just go with your your gut feeling, um, and we can talk about that in a little detail. Yeah, let, let me know what that comes back with because I'd be curious. Because uh, the biggest challenge, you know, with a distribution center is one, it's high ceilings usually. The bigger ones, it could be 20 meters high, you know, to the rafters, which may be the idea mounting point for your product, your antenna. But you combine that with high ceilings, narrow rows. And then you've got inventory that, you know, let's say you, you're, you're uh, we do work with a, a, a online pet food distributor. Well, think about what's pet food. I mean, it's, it's an RF absorbing like crazy, whether it's dog food, cat food, the bags they come in. So the inventory can absorb the RF. You got forklifts running around that are going up and down. So you got to make sure you can't have your antennas where they're going to pop it off. So, you know, the mounting can be weird. You got indoor outdoor where you have the warehouse itself, but you know, and the warehouse racks, which is obvious, but then you also have that open area where they're maybe receiving them. And then you got the outdoor areas as, as the trucks are coming in. So, I mean, to me, as, a, as an antenna guy, these are, these are lots of fun <laughs> because, uh, because again, the environment. So a lot of times people are like, well, I want to use an integrated antenna and put it on the, the top of the ceiling. Will that work? You know, the, the reality is it probably won't work. Because if I'm going to put this product 60 or 20 meters in the air with an omnidirectional pattern, or even an antenna like this, omnidirectional, there's no way it's going to beam down six, uh, 60 feet or roughly 20 meters uh, down to the floor where you may need your forklifts to be able to do inventory or, or whatever. So what we've, you know, because of that, what we've done is we started looking at, okay, how can we have antennas that are designed almost like a, a fan or a broom, a broom example. So, you, you know, those, you know, those fans that you, uh, you open up and you, you, you wave it if you're getting hot. We actually uh, designed a pretty cool antenna that's a warehouse antenna. Again, I like to show things. This antenna, if you mount it up on the ceiling rafters, and I think that may have been what people said was the, on the pole, uh, Sam, was beaming straight down in the right position, obviously, it's going to give you a very nice, like broom or fan pattern, which is gonna allow you to beam down those aisles and get really, really good coverage. Uh, so that's been extremely effective for us uh, out in the field. In fact, so much, in fact, that antenna, I mean, it's one of our biggest movers. We, we're right now, I can, can hardly build them fast enough for some of our rollouts. We actually had a lot of people come to say, say, we love that, but can you make a smaller version? So we have a half warehouse, which is for maybe not quite as high as ceilings, but yet still having the same concerns and needs. Uh, now for a warehouse, this is you know, an Omni antenna for the outdoor perimeter of the, of the distribution center for the trucks coming in can be quite nice. Something like this up against the you know, outside of the building, you know, throughout, you know, around the perimeter can give you some great coverage if again, the trucks are coming in. So this is kind of the, uh, if you're looking at the pattern from like an echo how of that uh, warehouse antenna I just showed you and actually the one I just picked up, this is actually, you know, it, with this mount in, installed in the field, there's that picture on the left. And as you see it beaming down, 
uh, and hopefully the picture will catch up here on, on the screen with it beaming down. Uh, okay, caught up now. You can see how the pattern, you know, goes left to right. So it can allow you, we've seen a lot of people put this style antenna maybe 30 meters in on each side of, of a very long, let's say you have something, or maybe a warehouse rack that's like, four, you know, let's say 100 meters long, and maybe they come in, excuse me, like 20 or 30 meters, excuse me, on each side, and they can have two of them beaming down and actually give you some redundancy as well. Picture on the right is another way to do it. You can actually go in the center and beam out. Uh, but the key is having that really narrow beam width uh, from a vertical perspective, and the horizontal is real broad, so you get that coverage. So that's worked out extremely well for us in uh, warehouses and even manufacturing facilities where you have obviously inventory of product as well. Uh, it's, it's worth saying that if anybody missed um, Matt and Mac's presentation earlier today, they've done a fantastic case study of a warehouse design um, using both directional and omni antennas, just as you described, Carter. So Perfect. it's definitely Perfect. worth checking out if people uh, missed that presentation earlier. No, that's awesome. Yeah, and here's like kind of an outdoor of a manufacturing facility. Again, the antenna you can kind of see her on the right. You know, the key is again be open-minded to different ways you know uh when we first designed the the warehouse antenna we thought mounting it straight down would work pretty well but we didn't realize how well it would work so it's it's kind of been proven a cool uh successful product and we obviously we, we hope to be as successful as it was but it's been kind of neat so that's kind of you know my spiel i'm right on on, on time uh you know Matt's been in the industry. I'll brag on Matt a little bit, which I, I hate to do in public, but I will brag on him. He's been in the industry for a while, uh, does a great job. Use him as your primary resource. Obviously, you can uh, get any of us involved if you need need be. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you've got any people that have been, or are you going to give away the accelerator today, right now, or are you going to wait? Just so yeah, yeah why not? Well, let's do it now. So we have got one question on, well, we've got a couple of questions from a couple of different people on Twitter. Uh, people are wondering, hair hair? no, no, no. <laughs> They're wondering okay. uh, how big your desk is and how many antennas you have underneath your desk. <laughs> uh, you know, it's pretty big and got, I, I have a bunch. <laughs> I, I can bring up more. You it's guys laugh. The one year that I broke open the antenna and showed everybody the elements, everybody loved that. So. Sorry, I'm a hardware guy. I like to show the hardware. <laughs> just just as well, we uh, we did it virtually. I don't think you'd fit all of that in your luggage if you came over to the UK. Oh, I would. I'd bring it. Don't worry. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got cases of good shipping. Hey, what was the other question, Matt? Um, right, well, I, I guess it's time to jump into yeah, announcing the winner of the battery pack. And then uh, I think I've just seen last minute some questions which have been uh, filtered over. So I'll go through them after we've announced the winner. So I'll just do a quick scroll on Twitter and stop. So stopped on Paul Whitehead. So if Paul Whitehead can get in contact with me or I'll, I'll send you a, a, a tweet at the M on Twitter, and then uh, we can arrange the shipment for you. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks for the people that have took part in that. Fun product. 